we really can't get over the hump, can we? Like, it seems to me every time Chelsea have a performance that you feel like could be the catalyst for the season, you know, they return to this immature style of football that produces either losses or draws. And today was no different. Chelsea draw Sheffield United. <laughs> Let's get into it. And blue is the colour. Greetings! Welcome back to Couch Critic with me, Dennis P. For what is your Chelsea match review, but more specifically, a tactical synopsis of Chelsea's performance versus Sheffield United at Bramall Lane, where they drew 2 2. But before I get into all that, I need you to do me a favor. If you already know the routine, then just skip right ahead to the video review. Before you do that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification button. It helps me and it helps my sponsors who go by the name of Major League Socks. And fellas, if you ever want to walk in the footsteps of greatness, you know what to do. Hit them up. The link, description. For the seventh game in a row, Chelsea have conceded two or more goals. Let's keep in mind that two of those games against championship sides, Leicester City and Leeds United. And, you know, in the other games, we're talking about the Burnley game and, you know, Brentford and whatnot. Chelsea have conceded very, very poor goals at the most inopportune times. And, you know, this game against Sheffield United is no different. You know, we're conceding a goal in the 94th minute in extra time where you're, you know, you didn't really assert yourself the whole match. You're looking to see out the game. You want to build on the performance against Manchester United where you turned the game around in the 100th minute or whatever it was where we got the, the winner from Cole Palmer. And there's just so many things that you, you're you left wanting when you're watching this Chelsea side try and defend. Just horrible, horrible in every way, shape, and form. And I feel like I was holding my tongue after the United game because we were able to find a way to win the game. And, you know, I didn't want to harp too heavily on the fact that we cannot defend when we come away and beat, you know, a, a side, a rival that we haven't beaten in quite some time. But against Sheffield United, I don't care if it's home or away, this has to be three points. There's no questions about it. You have to come away from this game with three points. And the reason why Chelsea haven't done so in this game is because we just cannot defend. We have absolutely no defensive structure. Nothing that resembles any sort of solidity, any sort of like composure, any sort of real like put your neck on the line, die on the die on the cross effort to see the three points come back to Stamford Bridge. And it goes beyond just the conceding our goals and not having any sort of like defensive structure or solidity. It's the fact that we have a manager that has not yet assembled any sort of real cohesive style of play. I mean, again today, we changed the way that we we're playing from the last match. We changed the tactics. Essentially, we played with three center backs. And, you know, we played with Madweke, who was advanced further up the pitch, um, basically playing as a wide forward. And, you know, obviously, Cucurella was a midfielder. And we looked to me more like a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3, something in and around there. But the fact that I can't even really pinpoint what Chelsea were playing when in possession of the football is another problem in and of itself. We just look so disorganized. You know, as much as we kept the ball quite well and recycled possession and, you know, I thought Enzo started the game quite well uh, on the ball and whatnot, we just still were so toothless in the final third. Like in matches in the past, Chelsea just failed to make the right decision at the right time, giving away the ball in crucial areas and then being counterattacked. It's just like a broken record over and over again when you watch this Chelsea team play. They have decent buildup in the first and second phases and then when we're looking to get into the final phase, we're looking to like really hurt teams. We have numbers, we have the numerical advantage in some cases we still do not get the final ball right. And as a result, we're left wondering what would have been if we would have made that connection there, what would have been if we would have spotted the run on the right, and what would have been if we would have taken the shot instead of trying to lay it off to somebody else. And this game was no different. It was exactly the same as in matches previous to this. You know, Chelsea just shows so much immaturity on the pitch. It's just unacceptable. As much as I love Thiago Silva and I love his leadership, I love his composure, I love his ability to snuff out danger, I love his reading of the game, his awareness, 
He's just not somebody that we can be playing with going forward. I don't understand how can Chelsea can go from playing with a back, a traditional back four for God knows how many games. And then here we are in match 31 of the season, we're 30, somewhere around there, and we're going back to a back three setup and we're looking to play with three dedicated center backs. Now, part of this may be down to the fact that, you know, we didn't want to overtax uh, Gusto on the right flank, which I could understand. He did pull up lame uh, the game before Manchester United. We didn't even think he was going to play. So there is credence to why we will try to go with De Sassi at right back. But there's no excuse from not from changing the structure of the team in order to accommodate it. And like, we just look so uncomfortable. We're not a squad that is capable of pulling off multiple tactics. We still haven't even mastered one. We have to master one trait, one way of playing before we start variating our styles and shapes. And I just feel like this manager just has not gotten that yet. He still is looking and tinkering with the side, playing guys in positions where they may not be the most comfortable, playing them, giving them assignments that they don't really understand. And it's leading to our undoing over and over again. When are we going to see a back line that is solid? When are we going to see a back line that have played together multiple games? Obviously, for some of it, it does come down to injuries. But for the most part, this manager continues to chop and change the back line, continues to change, you know, the familiarity in what you want to establish as your foundation in the back. And that, to me, is part of the problem. Now, I do want to address the fact that Mauricio Pochettino continually changes the structure of this team continually flips it from one style of play to a next and from match to match you're bringing in new personnel and expecting them to pick up this new assignment in this new role in this new style of play and it just doesn't make any sense to me chelsea have been predominantly playing a 4-2-3-1 with a double pivot with enzo and caicedo who have been given license to get forward at at will whenever they want and you know today we change the shape again we move cole palmer inside as sort of like a number 10 you know shadow striker kind of role and you have Madweki basically playing the the malo gusto role but with no defensive responsibility and you know it, it just puts a lot of onus again on the defenders and i just don't know if we have the defense that can cope with the extra pressure that we continue to put them under not only that, but like the assignment of putting, you know, Edwake on the right, Cole Palmer in the middle, you know, Jackson, who again had a muted game. I thought his touches were decent, but again, just a muted game. I don't think that he fired off one shot. I could be wrong, but I don't remember him having any real influence in the final third. And then you have a, the ever present, like Connor Gallagher playing the inside forward role, sort of like a number 10. I really think that a game like this where Chelsea are coming off a midweek game where on Thursday and then playing against on Sunday, this is a game that you want to experience on the pitch. You want somebody like Raheem Sterling to come into the game and provide you with that veteran leadership to see you through that match. I really think that you have to bring somebody like Raheem Sterling into the game. You know, you have to give him the opportunity to, 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 to hurt a team like Sheffield United. If there's one thing about Raheem Sterling that I'm most um, impressed with is that guy, when he plays lesser opponents, He's so prideful. He doesn't take those games lightly. He's looking to kill teams like Sheffield United. And, you know, it's just, it's sad that we didn't get to see him today. And in, in return, we saw Connor Gallagher, who's been playing every minute of every game, it seems like, and not really showing, you know, enough in that final third to warrant an ever present in the side. But most specifically, the thing that is irking me and has been irking me all season, it's just going to be a painful ride for the entire season is just Chelsea's lack of attention to detail. You know, the lack of really being switched on when the moments really matter, when you're trying to see out matches. You know, the lack of awareness, the lack of defensive awareness. And I know I've been like harping on Badia Shield for so long, but I tell you, I kid you not, man. Hollywood could not, you could not sell this script to Hollywood. The 94th minute he comes onto the pitch and Chelsea concede in the 94th minute when he fails to win a header, it just gets bobbled around for a while and nobody switched on. You know, Sheffield's first to the ball, McMurdy, the man that Batty Shield's supposed to be marking, finds himself in front of goal and he just buries it. And I mean, it's these things. Like he comes on specifically in a defensive role to see out the match. Just the last, the last detail of the game. Like we defend that, that set piece from there and I guarantee you Chelsea probably see out the match and win it. But you know, he comes on, first play, error. 
you know, does not win the, the aerial duel, then does not track the runner. And, you know, I don't want to harp on it too much. I, I really don't. I, I really feel like anyone that puts on the Chelsea shirt, I have a lot of respect and, and love for, adulation for, but it's just like, I just can't watch this guy play football right now. I really think that you need to take him out of the line of fire. I understand why he wasn't on the pitch for this game, maybe down to fatigue, maybe down to just details, like he's not very switched on all the time. I really don't understand why we had to opt to bringing him back onto the pitch and the final, you know, the final kicks of the game. You know, I'm at the point right now where I would rather see Alfie Gilchrist come on and see out matches where we're looking for a little bit more defensive solidity. And, you know, I could be wrong there. He's a younger guy too, you know, hasn't really had a lot of experience, but I feel like he just has the right mentality. He's always, whenever he comes into the game, he's always a guy that's looking to like really, you know, put in, make an impact the defensive end of the pitch. He's not a ball watcher. He's not a guy that's not gonna engage, you know, in the, in the tough areas and whatnot. And, you know, I, I would have liked to have seen him come on and maybe move the sassy back inside into the, the center, the center back position and whatnot. But again, it didn't happen. And, you know, we can see the goal and we lose. And it's just down to these minute details that continually, continually undo Chelsea. You know, I understand like this is a game you're playing against Sheffield United at Bramall Lane. Like we, it shouldn't even have been close. It really shouldn't have been close. We had enough quality on the pitch to be up 2-3-0, even though we didn't create a lot of opportunities. And, you know, it's just really, really disheartening that it's coming down to the final stages of the game and we fail to have the attention to detail, the defensive awareness, just the resoluteness to see out the match. And, you know, here we are again, you know, this is just where we are right now. A team that doesn't really have the offensive impetus to really put teams to the sword. And then when we do get up, we do not have the dis defensive resoluteness to see out the matches. And, you know, you, you mix those two combinations together and you see what you have right now is a mid-table side that's not really looking to move up the table at any real regularity. It's just like fits and starts. You have one good match. You feel like it's going to be a galvanizing performance. You have the next match. It's a setback again. And I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I, in my heart of hearts, I don't think that they're going to be sacking um, Murta Pochettino anytime soon. Could be wrong, but I just don't see it. But we really need to focus on these minute details if we're going to be a side that it's going to be reckoned with. And with that, I'm gonna wrap it up there, guys. I just feel so apathetic with this club right now. The, the way that we've fallen from grace at such an alarming pace, you know, after spending so much money the last two years, three years and whatnot, it's just really, really detached me from the club. I just don't feel connected to the players that we often are looking to to produce results. The guys that I really want to see on the pitch are the guys that are in the infirmary, always injured, the Nkunkus, the Lavias, the Reese Jameses. You know, like, it's just so disheartening, man, to see this club just, just crumbling before your eyes, you know, and just through, you know, lack of, you know, lack of vision, lack of real understanding, lack of real football acumen at the highest levels at that club, you know, people that really understand the game, just not present there. And, you know, we try to, you know, throw money at things to fix bullet holes and stuff like that. And it's just not working, you know, it's really not working. We lack leadership all over the pitch. We lack real cutting edge. We lack a real killer up front. We have a real sheriff in the back. There's just so many things that you can look to and just say, what has happened to our club, you know? And I really don't think that it's gonna be a result in the manager getting sacked. I just feel like we're at the point right now where, you know, we if we want to improve this squad in the summer, you know, we can't afford to, you know, be sacking another class, another manager when we have another one on the books uh, in, you know, Grand Potter and then buying, you know, paying for another one, maybe in a, re a release clause to get another one. It's just, it's just not gonna happen, you know, it's not going to happen, so. We're gonna have to stomach another year of this and hopefully, you know, have a little bit more of a mature squad, a little bit more of the players that, you know, we've seen in the injury, on the injury list, you know, come back and give us more than, you know, a couple games at a time, you know, give us longevity, give us consistency, you know? Um, but I don't know what to make over the rest of the season. It's really, again, my apathy settled in so much, I don't know what else we could be looking for. Sure, we can probably get to the FA Cup final, but. Does anyone think that we're going to win at this point in time? It seems like every time Chelsea have one big win, it's followed up by one massive setback. So how can we string together these performances and produce a cup 
and maybe even a European place. I just don't know if it's going to happen. But well, I'll tell you what, what is true though, we're going to have to continue to keep the blue flag flying high and up to Chelsea. Peace.